Happy Thanksgiving, everyone. We're going to take a look at the Thanksgiving Day games, and we're going to look at all the Week 13 games in the NFL. Of course, we start with the Chicago Bears at Detroit, and with Detroit, we're looking at 10 and 48 and a half. Detroit's been a freight train. If you step in front of them, they roll over you. Uh, this is uh, this is a tough team to bet against. I've tried it a couple times. I've been wrong. Uh, Chicago, they're playing a little bit better. Caleb Williams is learning his game a little bit. Um, they're more competitive. I'm not thrilled with the coaching staff. They, the offensive coordinator change has made a difference. But uh, Caleb uh, is, still has the tendency, as most inexperienced quarterbacks do when they can't get their first read, they hang onto the ball a little too long, ends up in a sack usually, or a desperation throw that ends up in a incompletion or an interception. And that is where he's at in his career at this moment. Giants at Dallas. And now the Giants have given us signals that they're not trying to win. You go to Tony, or you go to uh, Tommy DeVito, who's your third string guy. You pass over Luck, who is your second string guy. Why'd you do that? I don't know. Maybe you're just not trying. Uh, they get rid of uh, Danny Dimes, Jones. Um, you're looking at Dallas, three and a half, 37 and a half. They went to went to uh, the Dallas went to Commanders last week in the ten point dog and they win the game. Um, <laughs> I guess the joke is that uh, Jerry Jones doesn't know how to tank. If that's what he's trying to do, he didn't do a good job of it. Miami at Green Bay. This has uh, got some interesting issues going on here. Green Bay's three and forty seven. You see some 47 and a halves as well. There's what the there's like a Siberian cold front in Canada that's coming down through the northern part of the United States. It's going to be very cold in Green Bay. Wind chill, everything maybe around six degrees. Maybe the temperature will be in the 20s, but the wind chill will make it feel a lot worse than that. We do know that Miami. That's not a Miami temperature. Um, can they play effectively at that temperature? Well, you know, when you're looking at the game, it's three. It's not, you know, they're not, the money isn't overwhelming going towards the Packers. But Miami has to overcome the wind chill, the weather, the freezing temperatures, something they're not used to. That's another element in the game that we have to look at. Las Vegas goes to Kansas City, Kansas City 12 and a half and 42 and a half. We do know that Vegas uh, Minshew is out for the season. Quarterback issues, they really don't have a quarterback that's what you say NFL caliber as a starting quarterback. Uh, Kansas City has not been blowing people away. Their defense has been suspect. They're giving up points. They're giving up passing yardage. We do know what they're capable of. The question is, are they capable of it and they're not playing up to capability? I mean, they they played the Panthers and, and the Panthers are one of the worst teams in football. And they didn't do well. They, they played tooth and nail with Buffalo and up at Buffalo and that could have turned in their favor. So they're there. They, this is still the champion and taking them down is going to be tough, but that's a big, that's a big number. Tennessee at Washington. Uh, Washington's five and a half. This is the same team that blew a 10 point, uh, when they're favored by 10 over Dallas and they lost the game. Tennessee is playing a little bit better, and Levis, is he's got the talent. He's got the skills. He has a little bit of Jameis Winston wildness in him, 
where he throws the ball in the wrong place. He makes bad decisions. Can he grow out of that? Can he be trained out of that? Can he be coached out of that? At times, he looks like he has done that. But other times, he just goes back to it. So, And you're seeing regression from Washington. This is not the same team that started the season. Now, these are young young players, young quarterbacks, different owner, different coaches. Um, this game was eight on the send-out a week ago. It's five and a half. That's in it's 45 or 44 and a half. I see mostly 44 and a halves on this game. Chargers, we saw them last night against uh, Baltimore. Well, they're going to Atlanta. Well, Atlanta is not Baltimore. And there's no uh, Lamar Jackson there. And there's no Travis Henry. Um, Atlanta is a marginal uh, football team. Six and five on the on the year. Yes, they're leaving their division. The Chargers under Jim Harbaugh are going to improve, but it's going to take time. They have holes. That would have been a closer game had the wide receiver Johnson been able to catch three passes that he dropped. However, the Chargers are not as good as the Ravens but they might be as good as the Falcons. Game is, um, Chargers, Chargers are favored here. Now, I don't know if that's a valid number, but that is the number. One and a half or two, 48's the total. This is a cross country trip off a short week. Tough spot. Pittsburgh at Cincinnati, this is a big game. This is a big game for both these teams. Uh, Pittsburgh is eight and three, Cincinnati's four and seven. I would say if Cincinnati loses this game, you can forget about playoffs for them. If they win the game, they still have a lot of work to do. Pittsburgh has a very rough schedule going forward. And it would not be surprising to me if they were two and four or three and three in those six games they have ahead of them. This is a tough game. Cincinnati's two and a half, the total 47. And that's 46 and a half in one spot, but mostly 47s. C- Cincinnati has a potent offense. They really, I mean, Burrow is a great quarterback. They got a couple wide receivers, a running back who's a replacement, but he might be, a, a, he's a, he might be a step up from the starter. They are potent on offense. Their defense is very suspect. Pittsburgh plays a different style. That's not normally people don't play, teams don't play like they play. But they have a way of winning. Tomlin's a good coach. Uh, He's he's tough to beat. They're not championship style or caliber, but they're good enough to be 8-3, and and they just beat the Ravens. Very tough game, big game for both teams. Indianapolis at New England. Indianapolis got a lot of money last week against the Lions, which was a huge mistake, and I was I fell into that trap. Indianapolis is three, 42 and a half. They're at New England, who looked absolutely terrible last week. Both these clubs need to rebuild, but New England has a lot more rebuilding to do. So we do have um, valid, I don't know about the validity of Indianapolis being a road favorite, but they are the better of the two teams, slightly. Houston and Jacksonville. Now Jacksonville might get uh, Lawrence back at quarterback. That's the way it's trending, but they're a mess. They're two and nine, Houston seven and five, but there's a lot of regression going on in Houston. Stroud is not having the year that he had a year ago. You see a lot of regression there. They're five-point favorite, 43, on the road against Jacksonville. Jacksonville is a mess. Um, The head coach should be gone. I think he should be gone by, should have been gone before this. Um, 
Lawrence comes back. Who knows? What, he hasn't played up to, up to what they expected of him. I don't know what to say about this game because uh, we're not getting – this isn't the uh, Stroud, this isn't Houston, the Texans of last year. Totally a different team the way they're playing on the field. Yes, they've had injuries to the wide receiver. Um, everybody has injuries. But they haven't been over, ever, able to overcome it. Very difficult game. Two bottom feeders right now, the, the way these two teams are playing. Arizona Minnesota is a big game. Arizona coming off the loss at Seattle, which is a division game. They're six and five. Minnesota's nine and two. Minnesota's coming off the game that they struggled with uh, Chicago last week. No question, Minnesota looks like the better team, but I'm not going to step out and say, "Hey, they're really the better team. They're really capable." They have the the ingredients, but Arizona at times this year has looked pretty remarkable. Now, this game is indoors. Arizona had played in weather up in Seattle last week. It wasn't terrible, but it was definitely not what they're used to playing in the desert. Indoor game is probably going to help them. Minnesota's three and a half, the total 45. You might get a game out of Arizona here. This could be... One of those spots, uh, non-divi- non-division home favorite against a team that has a chance to win the NFC West. Seattle at the Jets. Can anybody be more of a mess than the Jets? Yeah, well, I guess so. I guess the Giants could be. Um, Seattle's favorite, two and a half, 41 and a half. They say Aaron Rodgers is going to play. I don't think Aaron Rodgers is going to be there next year. I don't know if Aaron Rodgers will be playing anywhere next year. I'm not sure. I'm not sure he wants to. I'm not sure anybody's going to want to pay him. Seattle's playing pretty good ball. They're two and a half point favorite, 41 and a half. Uh, when you look at the momentum of these two teams and where they're going, Seattle deserves to be the favorite. Tampa Bay at Carolina. And what can you say about Baker Mayfield? And here's a guy that's bounced around a little bit from Oklahoma for number one draft choice, goes to Cleveland. Every Cleveland messes up everybody. Um, just the way it is. They're six point favorite on the road at Carolina. Carolina played a little bit better last week. Uh, Bryce Young played a little bit better as well. He's growing into the job, maybe. He was a number one draft choice as well. You got number one against the number one at the quarterback position. I don't know that Tampa Bay deserves to be six on the road. I think they win. I don't know if they cover this. 46 and a half is the total. Uh, Baker has been a warrior. He is playing hard. He's carrying the team in a lot of ways. They've had injuries at wide receiver, but they look like they're getting a little healthier in that spot. Rams, what a disappointment they were. The last two home games they played absolutely terrible against Miami, against Philadelphia. Now they're on the road and they're a three-point favorite at the Saints. Now I know some people say this is this game, this move from two and a half to three. So obviously there's money that's come in on the Rams. 49 is the total. Like I said, Rams are three. I'm just not convinced. And the Rams are still in the mix for the NFC West. But I'm just not convinced. I mean, their offensive line does not protect Stafford. Do the Saints have a capability of uh, taking advantage of that weakness? Saints aren't a great team. They're four and seven on the year. Rams are five and six. People are bet have bet them. They bet them up from two and a half to three, but I just am not convinced. I'm not convinced that's the right move. Philadelphia, we saw how well they played, and we saw Baltimore, or, or, uh, yeah, Baltimore, how they well they played. This, these are two of the top four or five, six teams in the NFL. This is a hell of a matchup. Baltimore's three fifty-one. 
You can see some 50 and a halves as well. There's a, plenty of that. So you like the favorite, you like the dog, you like the over, you like the under. Both teams can run the ball. They're very good at it. Uh, and you've got running backs and you got two good quarterbacks. And you got the, I mean, this, this is a hell of a game. This is the best game of the week, in my opinion. Definitely a must-see game if you're a football fan or football better. Um, there's going to be people taking Philadelphia based on the fact a little bit more rested. Baltimore coming off the the short week. We're on the short week. You got brother against brother last week. I don't know that all that's going to matter. This is big. Best game of the week. San Francisco at Buffalo. Now, San Francisco is loaded with problems. The Niners right now, I'm going to bet that they don't make the playoffs. They really are going to have to pull a hat trick here. They're going to have to pull a rabbit out of a hat. They're going to Buffalo. The seven, six and a half or seven point dog, 44, 44 and a half. Purdy is throwing lightly. He's got a shoulder injury. Nobody is really saying how it happened, when it happened, what is it? But they're in, Niners are in trouble. This is a team that's played a lot of games over the last few years. You know, you go deep in the playoffs and then you go to the Super Bowl and you lose. Is this the Super Bowl hangover? Buffalo hasn't been to the Super Bowl. They're 9-2. and two. They just beat Kansas City. That's why the favorite line here, you got the 6.5, 7, 44, 44.5 is a total. It's a hell, of a hell of a game. But I don't know, and we don't know, who's going to play quarterback for San Francisco. Is Purdy going to be able to step up and get in the game? I don't know. It's still a big question mark. And then you got the Monday night game, Cleveland at Denver. Well, watching that Cleveland-Pittsburgh game the other night in the snow, that was that was fun. That was a fun watch. Cleveland put pulled the rabbit out of the hat, and they, they won that game against a rival, a division rival that's two hours down the road by car. Cleveland to Pittsburgh, that's how close it is. They're going to Denver, who's got the young quarterback, Knicks, and you got the Sean Payton. This is a very disappointing year for Cleveland, three and eight against the seven and five Denver Broncos, who are in the playoffs at this moment. Cleveland's not playing to go anywhere. They're not going to be in the playoffs, and I'm sure there's going to be a lot of changes. I hope I hope they don't bring back Deshaun Watson because that. That has messed up this whole franchise. Not that they needed any more messing up because they do that on their own. But that was a Super Bowl victory for them against Pittsburgh. Can they step up to play another game to keep their, you know, season going for whatever reason? They're just playing out the string. Denver, on the other hand, has a lot to play for. Like I said, they're in the playoffs at the moment. They're a a five-and-a-half-point favorite. The total is 42. Uh, you see some 42 and a halves as well. Denver has the capability of getting bad weather. So this is one of those kind of games where night game in Denver, Mile High Stadium, you got to know what the weather is. It's a little too early to try to predict that now. And there is a big cold front coming out of Canada that could affect a lot of the northern states in the United States. It depends on which direction it goes and how intense it is but it's going to be cold and it could be windy it most likely will be i don't know that it's hit hit denver i don't know that it will hit denver on monday but they're the things you have to be concerned with uh bigger game for denver more logical that they'll come to play harder i don't know if cleveland will continue them what they did against pittsburgh because the week before it kind of looked like they would be in a position to play better, and they really got smoked by the Saints. So I don't know that that's going to happen. Right now, I would say that probably Denver is going to have a little bit more motive, reason to play and a little bit more motivation to play. But it's a lot of it's. There's a lot of question marks when you have teams that could be in tank mode or just give up on the season. Usually, players are not 
like that. It's organizations that are more like that because they're thinking about draft choices and salaries and issues like that. But, but these players, um, they usually have a lot of pride. So that's a tough call. Anyway, that's it for this card. Happy Thanksgiving to everyone out there. We've had a couple good weeks, uh, Saturday and Sunday. Two weeks ago, we were 17 and three. This past week, Saturday and Sunday, we were 11 and six. Unfortunately, our Thursday and Monday night games have not done well for us the last couple of weeks. So they were losers, but overall very profitable, very happy with the season. And we got the college playoffs coming. That's going to be exciting. We've got some eliminations. You're not going to see, you're not going to see Alabama win it after what they just did. And you've got some other teams that got eliminated to open the door for some other teams. Um, it's going to be interesting and we're going to cover it all for you and do the best we can to get you the best information we can right here from Las Vegas and happy Thanksgiving, everyone. We'll talk to you again later.